Hi, my name is Alex. I'm the CEO of Chili's. Not from Chile. Um, and we, I'm, I'm just gonna give a bit of an introduction about who we are, what we do, and why we need you guys to love what we do, because you're gonna love it too. Um, long story short, we started five and a half years ago uh, a company called Chili's with a token called CHZ and a consumer facing product called Socials.com. And five years ago, forget about crypto for us, it was all about the sports industry. It was about the fact that 99% of sports fans are not in the stadium, not in the city, and sometimes not even in the country of the team they are supporting. And five years ago, we created the concept of fan tokens. Fan tokens are not NFTs, they are fungibles. They are, I hate that word, cryptocurrencies, if you want in that way, but they are crypto assets that are fungible. Some of them are actually are listed on Binance and Hobby and OKX and Upbeat and everywhere in the world. And five years ago, we started to work with two teams, Paris Saint-Germain and Juventus. Not sure there is a lot of football fan here, but except one at least. Yeah, yeah, okay, there is one football fan in the room, two football fans, three football fans. Uh, it's yeah, four, okay, so that's 50% of the room. Um, but the, the idea was we created these tokens in order to help teams to engage and monetize their fan base globally. And we've been very lucky, I'm gonna fast forward five years later, now we work with more than 100 sports teams. We work with Paris Saint-Germain, Barcelona, Inter Milan, AC Milan, Juventus, uh, Manchester City, Arsenal, Tottenham, Spur, um, uh, any t Universidad de Chile in Chile. Uh, we work with uh, the biggest uh, Brazilian team, uh, Flamengo, Palmeiras, um, etc., etc. Turkey here, which is our biggest market from a user perspective. We have, I think, 500 or 600,000 users here in Turkey. Um, we work with Galatasaray, Trabzonspor, and all the biggest uh, team. And at the beginning, when we started, we had a so-called private chain. It was a, an, an Ethereum fork uh, where we minted ERC20 tokens for the fan tokens, but that chain was private, was not at all decentralized, forget it, it's not the point. It was only available, one, to socios.com, which is, or, and I will talk a little bit about that, which is our uh, mobile app that has 2.2 million users. Um, that is the, yeah, the consumer-facing app for the fans. And then it was, the, the chain was available, there was a whitelisting VPN-ish, uh, stuff for the for exchanges, so Binance and 25 other more or less exchanges uh, were connected to the chain. So for the first five years, 100% of the work of these tokens were done by us, which is cool. We we managed to onboard all of these big teams. We work with UFC, Formula One, Formula One teams. We have the token of um, Aston Martin, uh, Alfa Romeo. We have few other, few other. We have 80 other uh, brands. But we also realize that. First, we cannot do everything ourselves, and that sending all these fans and these users just in our platform is actually limiting the interest of the token themselves. Um, I'll take the example of this gentleman, because now that we are friends forever, uh, we um, with a, a fan of uh, a team that we work with, but he doesn't know that uh, that token exists, and it's the fault of the team. It's the fault. Or it's our fault as well, and we we think that what will make a big difference in the next three to five years is, and we call the strategy fan token everywhere, is how can we help and incentivize and have developers, projects, startups, whatever, developing and, um, and building new features for these tokens and for more other things we, we, we are launching. Uh, you want to show a video or I, I, I have a feeling you want to click on something? Okay, no, no, but so, Oh, that's cool. I've never seen that. Uh, so, g going back, let's 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 go, let's go back a little bit about um, what we've built in the last few years because it's important. The, the original idea of why we created this concept of fan token, and I'm going to give you a fun fact. Uh, the original name of a fan token is a voice token. Actually, the fan contract, the smart contract. I think it's still written vote or voice. Yeah, um, and. We created the voice token because we wanted to give a voice to the fans. You own a token, you can vote on decision of the club. And I'm gonna give you some example of, uh, that we've done. Um, 
But then when we started to pitch in 2018, I'm talking like Q1 2018, when we started to pitch about this voice token, people thought, oh, you're launching a new Skype, you're launching a new telecom uh, platform or telecom token. So we, 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 um, we moved into the concept and the name of fan tokens. Think, as, think fan tokens being a loyalty program that is tokenized. It's literally that. It's Paris Saint-Germain, there is 20 million tokens, they are pre-mined, they are pre-minted, They are right now, I don't know, six million, let's say, uh, in the market. Um, and when you own a token in your mobile phone, in this, for now, uh, very centralized app and centralized wallet called Socios.com, you can vote on decision of the club. I repeat, if you own a fan token of the team that you like, you can vote on decision of the club. So all the things that you've seen in the rooms there and we've all read about all over the world, DAO kind of things, it's this, but in real life. We, we, we are not saying it's a DAO, it's not, it's not decentralized fully, but it's a real utility where you as a fan, anywhere in the world, and I'll give this example, uh, I'm gonna take one example that I like. Juventus, so the Italian football team, uh, they were the first one to launch actually the token. So November 2019, so it's that old, well, it's actually four years today, um, we launched the Juventus token, And fans were able to vote, actually not fans, fan token holders were able to vote to decide what music in the stadium do you want to have when we score a goal. Maybe it sounds gimmicky for some of you, but when you go in the stadium and the, there is a goal, the music that is played till now was never chosen by the fans. From now on, at Juventus and many other clubs we were working with, this has been chosen by the fans and on chain. And the fun fact is, Uh, so the, the vote started in uh, November 2019. The result of the vote on chain uh, was uh, showed to the public in the stadium the 4th or 6th of um, January 2020. And at that time, Ronaldo, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, was playing for Juventus. Th we need to thank him uh, four years later because that day he scored three goals. It ended up being 4-0. So four times that day in the stadium, they played the new music that was actually chosen by the fan token holders on the blockchain. And here we are, four years later, if you go in the stadium right now, you will hear the music that was chosen four years before. And as another fun fact, if you play FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer, which both probably don't even name FIFA anymore or Pro Evolution Soccer, that's how old I am, um, You can hear the music, that music that was chosen because the, um, when they try to fit, uh, when they try to be as realistic as the team, they actually buy the right to the music. So the music that is chosen by the fan is actually already in the video games as well. So a fan token, fungible, ERC20, Solidity, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a tech guy here, so don't blame me. Uh, but it's purely a utility token where you own it, you can vote. The more you own, the more power you have in the vote, but there is, there is of course a limit because we don't want a billionaire buying all the tokens and say, hey, I'm the only one to vote. Um, and when we started that in 2019, since we've had hundreds, probably thousands, but let's say hundreds of votes, like for example, here in Turkey, there is a team, I believe Traps on Sport, uh, Traps on Sport and Galata Sarai, who ask their fan, what number do you want to have on the jersey of the new player we signed? I mean, that sounds silly, but it's super powerful. We had 19,000 registration that day when we announced it, and, and that kind of thing. So we are doing that all the time. We as a company, Socios and the Chili's Labs, which is the, um, let's say, uh, sister company, that's our job. Now we moved into, okay, we've done that for five years, but that's not enough. We need more utility. We cannot develop everything ourselves. We need more uh, flexibility, we need more creativity. And so we opened the chain. The chain became a permis permissionless chain, uh, actually a few weeks ago. Uh, it's a BSC fork, uh, so it's just an EVM. Uh, there. We, we just like super standard. I like to say, and that's what I will say tonight in the ceremony, is we are not, we are not the fastest, fastest chain. We are not the best chain. We don't compete to change the world. We don't want to change DeFi, etc. That's not our journey. Our journey is focusing on sports and entertainment, music, TV, and stuff, but let's say sports today, and creating an ecosystem where actually a fan of 
Barcelona. He's also a bit of a fan of PSG because there was Neymar. He's also a fan a bit of UFC because of whatever reason, and also a fan of um, of Formula One because of another reason. So we know that statistically, sports fans are not anymore fans of one sport and one team. They are fans of multiple sports and multiple teams. We spent the last five years signing all of these IP brands, all of these communities. We were the only company building tools for that. Now we, we, we grew that space and we opened a chain to allow you guys to try to hack or to develop or to grow other ideas that we have, other ideas that you have. But for the first time ever, you have a chance to work with big, powerful, massive brands where we're going to try to bring users to whatever you're going to develop. We're going to bring to bring the biggest IP or brands in the world to whatever you guys are going to develop. Um, and that's, yeah, that's more or less what we are pushing. Let me think uh, if there is something else you want me to talk about there or? Uh, if I knew what, yeah. Uh, so we, we do two things, or at least for now that's how we, say we see it. We have, the, as I said, the fan tokens, which are these fungible tokens. They are not NFTs, and by the way, I, we have in the company, but I have especially a love-hate relationship with NFTs. Uh, I love the tech, I hate the products. Uh, I think till now nobody really scored the right product that makes sense from a, from a, yeah, from a product perspective. Um, very often we are asked, hey, why we don't do your fan tokens but as NFTs? Why? <laughs> I mean, our fan tokens are just for to understand from a liquidity perspective, because it does matter, fan tokens are traded four times more than NFTs today. Uh, let's say it depends on the day, obviously. Today is actually, today is, I just checked now, it's two times more. Um, the whole NFT market today was traded $42 million. And when I mean $42 million, it includes uh, board apes and, uh, and all of this stuff that are like premium uh, products. Uh, the sports one is probably $2 million, which is like SoRare plus DraftKings and a few other stuff. Fan tokens today was $80 plus million. Sometimes it goes to $200 million. Why? Sure, because it's listed on Binance, on Upbeat in Korea, on Mercado Bitcoin in Brazil, Paribu here in Turkey. So we, we are comparing Opel and Apple and Oranges. Don't take me wrong. We cannot compare NFT trading and fungible tokens trading. But my point is, we all know that liquidity matters for the, whatever all of us are developing. Liquidity does matter. Um, and therefore, uh, fan tokens are a much bigger market to tap in from a liquidity perspective. We have DEXs that's going to come soon. For the first time, we still don't have yet a DEX for the, um, for the, for the chain. It's coming in a few weeks. So we, we spent the last year-ish really launching or preparing rather the launch of the chain. Um, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, we announced all the first kind of few partners, integration with the Wallet Connect and Magic Link and all the stuff that really help everybody to build their stuff, the Biconomy or Biconomy, I'm not sure to pronounce it, uh, for uh, account abstraction. We, we have all of the kind of pieces that step by step make sense. We have the IP, the brands. Um, we have users. Uh, decent amount, but now we need more cool stuff being developed, not by us. And that's on you, and we, we have these two categories, uh, and that's how we also uh, set up the rewards for um, the hackathon this week, this weekend, is there is a category of uh, uh, fan tokens, and there is a category of sports file. Um, if uh, you have a slide somewhere, or I have, I have it here, because I did my homework, almost. Um, zoop. In... Um, Well, there is this, and then there is the other things I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, or except Max, if you want to jump in on that. But just for, for, for you to, uh, to understand um, what we are seeing on the um, fan token and Sportify is fan token is all about the existing teams we have, these 80, 100, I mean, 80 slash 100 teams we are working with um, all over the world. And by the way, this is a global play, meaning that we have teams in Chile, in Brazil, in Mexico, uh, in, uh, in Turkey, in Malaysia, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, for example, we have the three biggest Indonesian team, massive market there, um, but we don't have yet the perfect tools to, to, to be different. In, in terms of what we are trying to, um, to develop, there is fan token gated platforms. My dream is always the same, is I own a Paris Saint-Germain token, I go to a Nike shop anywhere in the world and I get a 10% discount uh, because there was a QR code that, uh, that 
allow me to, to be identified and uh, authenticated to the e-commerce platform I have in front of me. The problem is in every country, more or less, it's different. So it's not a deal you need to do with Nike Global. It's a deal you need to do per country with the general manager of the marketing department, whatever. So we need to develop tools that allows us and allows fans and allows teams to actually scale the utility of these tokens. Proof of attendance is a, is a good example as well. Even though, as I said at the beginning, our main target is actually not the people who goes in a stadium. You know, in a stadium, just for you to know, in a stadium there is usually, let's say, 50,000 uh, people. I don't know in Galatasaray how many is it? 62, probably. Yeah. Um, but they play 20 times a year. Uh, a stadium is actually used 20 times a year. So it's not something you can use every day. Uh, having said so, uh, you can create tools where there is a, a tablet and there is a QR code regenerating every second and you go there and you scan it and then you will be identified as a, as a PO, uh, POAP uh, because you are a holder of the team, of the tokens, of the stadium you are. There is plenty of small things like this. There is of course some gaming related experiences. Uh, we are looking at ticketing, uh, obviously, sports data, Oracle was a conversation today. Uh, it's critical is how do you store um, result of sports team on chain so then other developers and projects can build uh, maybe sports betting, maybe some rewards mechanisms that because I own a Paris Saint-Germain token, I'm going to get a free NFT tonight that is minted automatically because they scored 3-0. But how do you know that they scored three zero? Well, you need to have on-chain data. The problem is, where do you get this data? We, there are providers who provide this data, but they don't want their data to, to go on-chain for free, uh, and everybody to be able to, have, to access to that data forever. So th there is some uh, complex things around that. Um, but for us, it's all about engagement, transactional, uh, and it's a bit limitless because we started with the sports space, and we have only 100 teams, more or less, all over the world. Uh, but then there is a few hundreds more that we have to go after at some point. Uh, we launched one of the biggest Premier League teams, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, a month and a half ago. Uh, we, we already have six or seven other Premier League teams, but we will have more uh, eventually. Um, and we, we keep have markets, new markets, where we can develop stuff. But again, our, our goal is really to make this chain uh, not the fastest, not the best, but just the sports blockchain or the one that at least deliver utility for real users and mainstream users all over the world. Um, in, in, term of, um, in term of price for today, I'll jump on that if you uh, want. I don't know if, yes. Uh, so there is two categories. Uh, so it's a 20K uh, price, um, seven and a half for the fan, fan utility token. So literally focused on what I said about these fan tokens. So what are the whatever feature or product uh, could come to bring more utility to these tokens. And there is a second pool for the so-called Sportsfy project, which are more neutral, maybe less fan token oriented. Could be a DEX, could be a lending, could be whatever other ideas, betting, uh, lossless betting, I don't know what is that. Um, and, and many other things uh, that can be invented. And then there is an extra uh, 5K uh, for uh, generic pool, uh, pool price, I suppose. Um, that's how we start at least this, uh, this weekend. Uh, that's on you, of course, to, uh, to, to go after that and to chase this. Hopefully, please tell your friends as well that chilies is cool. It's spicy, but it's cool. Uh, and you know, you know, unlike most of the other companies, blockchain, project, uh, foundation, whatever that you've seen here is, everybody's doing the same thing. Objectively, um, all our neighbors, it's all either layer one, layer two, I mean, at the end, it's everybody the same thing. Everybody's poaching every, uh, a developer to say, oh, I have a lending protocol. Oh, you can do it on my uh, new chain. It's amazing. Great. And it's cool. For you, it's cool because there is always a new girl that you can uh, try to date and get money out of it. Good for you guys. For us, it's a little bit different. We are trying to convince um, developers that, hey, maybe it's time to actually build utility on this blockchain and changing the narrative that it's all about money, 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 and actually bring uh, interest for users to actually use the blockchain that is not just about an ETF in Bitcoin and it's not just about the tokens going up. And that's where I believe Chilis can bring value to the users, to the fans, to the developers, uh, developers being either independent or eventually being funded to do more uh, with us or with someone else. That's, um, that's more or less the idea. Should I add anything, Max? You're about 20 minutes over. That's uh, great. We're gonna <laughs> no, we were going to open it up, I think it should be fairly easy, to a, a Q&A after that, um, in case you guys had any questions specifically about the 
the chain and how to access our test net. Go, go, James. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Like Alex said, it's an, an EVM chain, so uh, uh, it should be self-explanatory. We've created this, uh, this doc on docs.cheese.com. So yeah, docs.cheese.com. It should be on the QR code of the flyer that you can get from our table. You should have everything here. So you have the video. If you keep going through the video, it's going to uh, go through a section where it kind of gives you a walkthrough of the docs, of how to uh, bridge, how to uh, use the faucet, you know? And, uh, and then after, uh, after all that, you will have the price pools and some more useful information that we thought we'd throw in that, that you guys might need, um, in, including minimum gas price. We have a lot of people who um, complain about the gas limit uh, because basically when you deploy on our chain, there's a bit of a more complex uh, system smart contract. So just up the gas limit a bit before you deploy uh, to save you a bit of uh, hassle. We have some links to our, our test net. Our faucet, like I said, uh, you can see it right here. So um, it's linked to Twitter, so you can verify with your Twitter and you can get 25 chilies or uh, some fan tokens to play with as well. And we also have wrapped chilies. Um, for mainnet, to get chilies, you can use our bridge uh, between Ethereum mainnet and, and uh, cheese chain. But uh, we, could, we recommend that if you have chilies like on Binance or on, on, uh, on any exchange that has uh, connected to Chili's chain, uh, you, can, uh, you can use that as well. And we also have some dev tools that are, uh, are already there. Ob obviously, um, uh, I was speaking to actually one of the guys here. Um, you guys are used to a bad developer experience, uh, but if you guys want to, want to use our, our tools, um, we partnered with Morales, Tatum, uh, Third Web, Word Connect, Magic Link, there's some others as well. Uh, if, if so, if you need anything, just let us know and we can, uh, we can let you know. Uh, we have an Oracle, uh, Peeth as well. Um, I can add it as well in, in the list here. But basically, this is, uh, this is pretty much it. I will open to any questions, so go ahead and uh, throw them our way. Yeah? Yeah, you spoke about uh, you have an Oracle. Yes. Uh, but it's also like in the... It's also in the things you are looking for? Uh... Uh, like so the Oracle we have right now, it's for um, uh, price data, right? So price we, can, data. we can look for uh, Oracles which get different types of sports data, like Alex was mentioning. Like match results. Yes, yes, yes exactly. exactly. Uh, that's, uh, so P, P, uh, they, they integrated the cheese chain to distribute price feeds because they are DeFi oriented. Um, but what we are looking for is more like trying to create a sports oracle where we can store um, match results, real time, not real time. The question is how is it validated? Uh, users, not users, third party as companies. There, there are a lot of feeds available in the market, but how do you make it on chain? How do you scale it so developers can build tools with that uh, oracle? Any other questions? Is there any limitation of what type of smart contracts can be deployed or? Uh, no. no. Okay, since you mentioned before, the deployment can be, be expensive due to the governance. So we made some changes in the, in the, gov in the governance, uh, the system contracts, um, because we used to be a permissioned chain before. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, we made some tweaks. The tweaks are still there. Uh, so it might be a bit more complex to, uh, to deploy on chain because it's checking a lot of uh, extra functions in the system smart contracts. You just need to increase the gas limit a bit higher than you would, what you would usually do on other EVM chains and you'd be good to go. Uh, that includes also other ERC20 tokens that can compete with the ones you already have on the chain? Like can I create another fun token myself? Yeah, um, of course uh, we, we want to open up kind of uh, the ecosystem to have Maybe more sports brands? Yeah, we actually have, um, so there, there are, here in Turkey, for example, there are two exchanges that used to launch tokens, fa fan tokens. Actually, fan token is a trademark that we own. Different topic, but um, 
There is an exchange here called uh, Bitexen here in Turkey. They have uh, 15, 20 tokens that are very different than what we do. Uh, but they are, they are actually launching them. They are minting them on the chain, on Chase chain as well. Because eventually what's going to happen, if we all do well our job, but that's what's going to happen, we will be the chain where people, if you want to mint a fan token, even if you are a small rugby club in South Africa or in Ireland or in New Zealand, eventually people will mint their fan token on the cheese chain because there will be a bunch of tools dedicated for that space. So till now, we as a company, we were the issuer, the minter, master minter of fan tokens. In two years, we hope there will be thousands of legitimate, that's the, that's the only issue, but legitimate clubs and sports property that has nothing to do with us that will deploy through whatever platform their fan token and then it will be uh, they will have access to all the um, tools that are provided by uh, by the chain thank you mm -hmm. thank you very much that's okay that's it bye <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was a question thank you